Well, good day, everyone. Um, I got my mate who's uh, head down and, and ass up um, working on a car. This is the Ford Laser, the one that was smoky for the first about three minutes of running and smoke cleared, but it's got almost a dead miss in number two cylinder. And uh, according to the vacuum gauge, um, the twitching needle's telling me that it's got a valve problem. Um, I think it might also have other problems, but I, I'm not, not going to know until we get it apart. So this is this is my mate, uh, Wicked GQ Patrol. No you might recognise him from some of the videos he's done. Um, if you're not subscribed to him, why the hell not? Um, so I suggest you do that. Um, hop on over to his channel um, and have a look. You know, if, if you've got a four-wheel drive, you might find some of the how-to vids, you know, fairly interesting. Um, so anyway, um, we're pulling off the, the cylinder head to have a look at you know, what the hell's gone wrong with this motor? No, I'm not piping the way over here. And look at all these doodads and thingamajiggies. We've got this white thing here that's got a little hose there, and it's it's got a hose that goes to the um, to the inlet manifold. We've got one of these um, ports. We've got another hose that goes to that port. I don't know what, what the hell that does, but it's got another hose that goes over to the carby. So we've got solenoids and thingamajiggies and what he comes all over the joint. You know, like I remember when they introduced the EVAP system to cut hydrocarbon emissions. Which cylinder was it, Thurry? It was actually number two. Well, that feels fairly normal. We don't know about this side, but we're not on the right um, um, angle for... Uh, I mean, this is a valve I, ex I suspect has got a problem, either one of these two valves, so... Um, what are we looking at? Actually, the funny thing is, now that we've ripped it all apart... That's why it's missing. Because it's, look at that. It's tight. Mm. Just looking at that cam lobe, that's, it's on the base, it's not on the base circle, but it should be loose. Ah, it needs a timing adjustment. It needs an adjustment. Son of a bitch. It needs an adjustment. Alright, well, we'll keep you guys posted. Well, alright. Um, the valve clearances have obviously never been adjusted because, like I suspected with the vacuum gauge, um, and I'm not going to go through the diagnostic procedure of using, you know, vacuum gauges because just Google it, you know, you, you'll come up with a lot of useful information. But really, just use your instincts. If the needle's um, swinging back and forth, you know, quickly it, and steadily, it's obviously going to be valves. I mean, there's oil in there now. This is the valve that's the problem, number two cylinder. I um, don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but the top of that valve has been burnt off the edge of that valve so just maybe make it all shiny you can just see it in the top of the frame the valve isn't round anymore and the reason for this is very very simple um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get a close up in the um, face of one of the other valves without wasting the camera but you can see in the bottom of the frame the valve looks white the actual face if that's going to focus, it probably won't. You can just see the face looks white, okay? So the reason for that, understand the re understand that the valves, especially the exhaust valves, primary means of being cooled is when the valve closes and it seats. And um, when it seats, it transfers the heat in the, in the top or head of the valve, I should say, and it transfers it to the, to the seat and the cylinder head. Now, another thing to note about this valve is it's been really hot. Now, how I know that is because these valves, the faces, or the, the heads of the valves are all flat. See, it's, it's, it's flat, pretty much. Um, some of them are, are a little less flat, but, but they're reasonably flat, okay? You can see when I shine it up with some oil. Um, see, it's flat, right? You go to this number two cylinder, and it's, it's nowhere near flat. See, it's kind of, kind of started to curl over. Now that's why that valve was really, really, um, the clearance was really tight. Um, because as the valve heated up and got hotter and hotter, um, its ability to seal was compromised greatly. So when this, when this cylinder was firing, this valve was partially open, not fully closed. So the lesson here is if you have, if you do not have hydraulic tappets, lifters, whatever you want to call them, you need to adjust your valve clearances. Now I recommend every second oil change. Every every 20,000 Ks you need to adjust your clearances as per the manufacturer's instructions. 
Um, you don't necessarily need to do it in a specific order um, if you've got overhead cam, you, but you do need to do it on base circle. Now what that means is with the cam lobes in their lowest downward position away from the rocker arms. Okay, so base circle, it can't be halfway sort of there, it's got to be all the way on base. Adjust it to the correct clearances. Um, you really should use the manufacturer's instructions or workshop manual. Um, but Mazda B series engine, look at that. There's no real corrosion around the water galleries. These are all water galleries, there's minimal corrosion around there, so these cylinder heads don't corrode. Now I don't know what the hell Mazda used to put this head on, and I know for a fact it's never been off, but this brown stuff here, I had to use like a six foot bar to lever this cylinder head off. You can see where I was levering it off, and what we ended up doing was I'm using the manifold to, um, to lift it off you know really hard so this was well and truly glued on there like you wouldn't believe so I'm gonna pull this carby off and the cylinder heads wasted there's no point in you know there's no real point in trying to get the um, cylinder head rebuilt because it's going to exceed the value of another motor now when we go over to the motor o um, over here there's another really interesting thing to note you're probably never gonna see it in this light uh, with this camera but if I zoom right in Now you're not, you can't really see it on this, but what what you need to note is that there's still very slight cross hatching on the cylinder bores. Now that's impressive because this engine's done nearly 300,000 k's. You can sort of just see it in the, you can sort of just see it. You can just see it down there. You can sort of just make it out. There's very very light cross hatching still left in the cylinders, right? But this is a 270,000 k engine. It's 1.6 liter. It's gutless as gutless as hell. Now I dumped some petrol. Um, down this number four cylinder and it hasn't gone down so what that means is that these piston rings and cylinders are actually in fairly good condition so if I was going to reuse this motor and not just going to look for a replacement I would want to strip it down pull the pistons out get some new replacement rings just stock you know size rings of course you want to mic the bores and make sure they're not oval or tapered or anything but I guarantee they're not if it's got cross hatching visible they should be right but what you want to do is you want to whack a hone down all four cylinders, hone it really thoroughly. You don't want to take material off, but you need the cross hatching. What the cross hatching is designed to do is to retain molecules of oil um, to lubricate the pistons and rings. So the cross hatching is really important. If the cylinders are worn mirror finish like these are starting to become, then there's no lubrication and they'll wear out really quickly. So. Um, you know, Mazda B series engine. This is a, a B5 engine, I believe. You know, don't flame me if I'm wrong, but that's pretty. I'm pretty sure that's what I what I read. Um, but you know, you can't really fault the motor, can you? And it's really well designed. It's in really good condition. And what the crap is I used to glue it down with, but there you go. Well, good day, everyone. Um, this is the conclusion to the video that I shot um, about the laser Mazda B5, I believe the motor is. Um, to B series anyway. This is the um, exhaust valve from number two cylinder, and um, it's obviously been very hot now. The oil smoke. Um, it's it's happened for one very simple reason. I'll bring this into the light. See this valve stem is like blue, like it's gone a really dark colour. It's like like really dark blue. So it says to me that this valve's been very 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 hot and it's cooked the um, valve stem seal so that's why it's been you know dumping oil in the cylinders now as I said um, earlier on um, the head of the valve is no longer round you can see see as I turn it around you can see that it's, that it's not round anymore it's obviously got a bit burnt off there uh, I'll hold the valve in profile you're probably not going to see it but anyway, maybe I can get a shot like this. No. Just trying to get it. Okay, there you go. And sort of need a straight edge really, but you can just you can just see clearance between the bench and the valve face. Well, head, I mean the head of the valve. Well the valve should be flat. It's not flat anymore because it's sort of started to um started to be pulled into the valve seat. Because the valve's actually gotten hot enough to be red hot. 
Now I know this because the fact that the valve stem is blue and if you look at the back of the valve um, sit it back down on the bench, if you look at the back of the valve there's no real carbon deposits so if you see an exhaust valve and it's really clean like this is so it's got no carbon at all that means that carbon got the hell burnt out of it and it got sent down the exhaust pipe now the other valves have got more carbon than this and this particular going to focus it, they're, they're, they're more carboned up than this is um, so yeah, you know, it's gotten very hot the other thing is if I can get a close up of the face just set that camera down there the face doesn't look normal, not on a 45 degree angle or 40, it's, it's a 40 something degree angle, not all engines are 45 but but anyway, that, that just gives you an idea of what the actual face of the valve looks like. The face is the contacting surface of the valve to the valve seat, if it's ever going to focus. It's focusing on the shit in the background, that's really useful. There you go. Just gives you an idea of what the actual valve face looks like. It's not normal. It looks almost like someone sandblasted it. So it's wasted the um, valve seat as well, so it's not a matter of just getting another valve. You can see that bit where where the head of the valve isn't round. You can see that when I turn it around, see it suddenly changes and just got a bit missing. Stupid camera. Nice bit of focus. Not really. It's not really a macro sort of. You know, it's not meant to record really close up, but and it is pretty close up. But anyway, um. Yeah, I just thought you guys would be interested to see that, so... Like I was saying earlier on, the, the um, if you don't adjust the clearances of the valves and they're not fully closing, um, it'll destroy the valves and valve seats, but especially the valves, in, t in two ways. The first way is because the valves open and you get basically a blowtorch effect past the valve which is not supposed to happen. The face of the valve should be gas, it should be a gas tight seal um, when the valve is in the shut position. The other thing is the heat, because um, remember the exhaust valve opens um, and you're basically getting, you know, fire go straight out the exhaust port if you like. Um, so you're getting, you're getting like a real lot of heat go through there past the valve and it heats up the head of the valve and the primary way this valve cools itself down um, and why most cylinder heads are designed to have the most water flow around the exhaust side of the head is when this face makes contact with the valve seat it transfers the heat to the head really really important so when it's in the open position the head heats up when it closes again properly gas tight seal we've got no flame going past the, the head of the valve and um, it cools down the, the valve head um, by transferring the heat from the head of the valve to the actual cylinder head itself and then that is um, transferred to the coolant which in turn um, via the radiator gets transferred to the atmosphere so adjusting your clearances is really important um, also note that cars with hydraulic lifters um, there's actually intervals where you're supposed to um, collapse the lifter down with a lifter collapse tool um, um, Falcons you know for example um, you can, you know, you can make the tool yourself if you can be bothered. You're supposed to check the clearance of the, you know, and make sure that, you know, you don't need to replace the shim because Ford Falcons use a shim above the lifter. Um, if you're actually going to do that, though, I recommend you buy either a lift or a pair kit, which comes with all the rubber seals and, you know, the little retaining plastic things that hold the pivot heads on. Um, you know, so you can rebuild the lifters because they'll leak and they'll never work properly again if you don't. Or just buy new lifters. Um, but yeah, valve clearance is really important.